On this week's episode of In An Instant, we are going to take a look at a delicious and curious Instax square camera from Fuji, the Instax SQ1. One of the newest instant cameras on the market. You know I had to rock the wrist strap. Ooh wee! <laughs> the kind of photography that would become part of the human being. Press a button and have the picture. Welcome to In An Instant, my name is Ben, and on this week's episode, we are staring down the beautiful barrel of the Fujifilm Instax SQ-1. This incredibly aesthetic, vibey, and downright Gucci release from Fuji dropped in late 2020, and with its muted pastel colorways, a chiseled mid-century design, and smooth matte finish, there's no doubt this camera is a clear appeal to young entry-level users. Though I think you could say that about literally all Fuji cameras, but this one finally has the design to match the current cultural flavor. Speaking of cultural flavor, let me just take a quick sip of cultural flavor. No, I'm just kidding, it's, it's empty. Movie magic. Speaking of culture, my grandfather got me this Fujifilm hoodie, and I am not joking, this is the hoodie that they sent him by mistake initially. It says, I love you fo-eva. And I think it's implied that I'm in love with you fo-eva. Frankly, I think this might be the better hoodie. Um, I don't know. Back to the SQ-1, just could not not mention that. The colors available for this camera are, and I quote, terracotta orange, glacier blue, and chalk white. Terracotta, glacier, and chalk. Could be the names of my first three strong sons. So here's the deal with the SQ-1. This is the simplest camera imaginable. The flash cannot be turned off, and it essentially only has two modes of operation. Those would be normal lens position. This is intended to shoot 0.5 meters to infinity, and selfie mode, boom, with a rotate. 0.3 meters to 0.5 meters. This is your close-up lens. Basically, that length is the standard length of the human arm uh, as deemed by the National Association of Human Arms. It also does have a selfie mirror, which actually somehow works. They often don't, and uh, that's about it. You might at this point be wondering, Benny Bags, why in the heavenly flying frick would you buy the SQ-1 when cameras like the SQ-6, the SQ-10, and the bulbous king, the SQ-20, exist? These are cameras with more features, including flash override, exposure compensation, and double exposure. Well, first of all, <clears throat> first of all, the SQ-10 and the SQ-20 are digital cameras. The SQ-20 can literally record video. And the quality's great. Obviously, there are people that want such things, but I am not one of those people. Until I start bioengineering myself and become part Android, I am flesh and blood. I am an analog thing, and I wanna shoot analog pictures with analog cameras. However, the SQ-6 is an analog camera, and with its basic but greater set of features, you might also wonder why someone would spend $10 more on the SQ-1. Well, to be honest, there's, um, there's not really a good reason you would do that. I think this comes down to your preference in design and the amount of thought you wanna put into the shots you take with it. Part of the reason that I was attracted to the SQ-1, besides the fact that it is attractive and honestly has me feeling some kind of way, uh, was that I always kind of loved my Instax Mini 8. Oof. It's just this, you know, little dumb little doinker thing that gets passed around at parties and, you know, watches nights devolve from friendly cheer to word slurring messes induced by Pinot Noir, double IPAs, and very high risk dance moves. It's just a brainless thing to use. And while the Instax Mini format is fun for that sort of thing, I liked the idea of having a square shooter that I could fire more freely with. In fact, my initial concept for using this camera was to load it exclusively with Instax Square Monochrome, which was a brand new release that came out at the same time as this camera. This was honestly a pretty exciting development and was a long time coming, and I thought it might just be cool to, you know, keep the monochrome stuff in there, sort of take fun shots of family and friends, and just use it as a lighthearted side piece. But due to COVID probably, the monochrome film didn't quite ship on time and so I had to start out shooting in color. 
I have to say that the close-up lens has been really fun to use. It's a sweet field of view and can help you really fill the frame to make the most of that small Instax Square canvas. The 65mm f12.6 Fujinon lens is, as you would imagine, sharp. While there's always, always something to be said about glass lenses, there is a way to engineer very sharp plastic lenses, and this is the way. You could also look at the Quintic plastic lenses on the Spectra cameras, which produced very sharp pictures, so it is possible. All right, so the flash. The fact that it's always on really isn't as bad as you'd think. I mostly just cover it up when necessary with my left hand and with a max shutter speed of 1 400th of a second and the narrow f-stop, uh, it really makes it easy to expose it properly. Not that you have any control over exposure at all really, but the auto exposure almost never misses except uh, some indoor shots, which have come out a bit dark on the monochrome. I have no idea why. Lauren, our instant queen has been using this camera a fair bit. And I thought we should maybe get her perspective on this sweet square treat. So I'm gonna throw it over to Lauren right now. Let's hear from her. The reason I love this camera is, well, first of all, the color, obviously. This is like part of the look. But speaking as a beginner in photographer, uh, I find that Fuji cameras are just very easy to use. There's really not much you can do in terms of messing up the shot. Um, and you know, square is really the format that you want. Uh, Instax Mini is, is, is good. again, great, it's cheap price point, but uh, when you think of instant photography, you think of that square format, and this just does it for me in a way that the Instax Wide Film or the Instax Mini Film does it. You turn it on, you point, you shoot, and uh, it's very difficult to mess up the shot, so that's why mm. I really like this camera. I think there's something to be said generally about your relationship to a camera and how it motivates you to do certain things. The SQ-1 is exceedingly basic and I would never argue otherwise, but it is also a beautiful object that we like to have around the house. It can be picked up and blasted off at a moment's notice. My wallet's not gonna be like so upset with me. I mean, it always is really. That sort of friendly accessibility is valuable. Y'all know me, I'm a Polaroid guy. That's like where my whole heart's at. Instax is awesome, I support the film. I think it's crazy that there are two instant film companies in 2021, but I will sort of always defer to my 600 or SX70 film. However, it is more expensive. It's more of an artistic tool. Having the SQ-1 brings you back to something that I've mentioned before, which is shooting instant film like less of a rare commodity and more of a fun way to capture memories. For many people starting out, that's exactly what this camera is for. And for someone like me who is so deep they can, they can barely see the sky, like I'm so deep in this, um, it is kind of nice to reconnect with that sort of simplicity now and then. All right, I think I'm ready for pros and cons. I think you're ready for pros and cons. I think we should do the pros and cons. Pros, the beautiful design. I think this is the best looking Instax camera ever produced by Fuji. And I hope that they continue with this visual language, perhaps adding more features. Uh, lens sharpness, the Fujinon lens produces exceptionally sharp photos with the Instax format, which is already sort of predisposed to sharpness and ease of use. This may be the first pro that is also a con for many people, but the simplicity is great for certain applications. And cons the lack of said features. Like I said, you can look at it two ways. The price. At $99 retail, the price point for this camera makes absolutely no sense. I get that the SQ6 is older and thus is naturally less expensive, but I think the SQ1 should have been cheaper to fit its lower tier feature set. Like a chicken Caesar, that's a wrap for the SQ-1. Uh, I definitely second guessed myself before destroying that add to cart button on the pre-order, but uh, Alas, this simple terracotta orange snack has somehow found its way into my heart. Whom would have guessed it? Thank you for watching in an instant. Go ahead and choke that subscribe button so hard it turns glacier blue. Stay tuned for more reviews, breakdowns, shoots, guides, and all things instant. Bye.